James. James, calm down. Let's have a, a normal discussion instead of shouting because it's, it's not productive. What I'm saying is that when two people of opposite gender get married, they have the option to have children. Not necessarily. Can I finish? Can I, can I finish? Can I finish? Okay, can I finish? They have the option, unless you're talking about an anomaly where there's some medical reason they can't. That is, a, that is an exception to the rule, not the rule. But generally speaking, people get married not only for lust, not only just because they love each other or that is the reason. There's many factors in, involved in that. Because when you get married, you get married not only to one person, you get you basically bring another relationship, a whole family of the other person into the equation. So there are many factors in marriage. Okay, it's not just for lust. Okay, not just for sex either. And not just for children either. So these things are part and parcel of a marriage. Okay, but when you have the op when you have the same sex marriage, what is the main reason? Exactly. Well, you can't have children for sure, so we can't use that as an option. Straight people can't have children. So that doesn't mean they love their partner any less. Once again, you're using an example of. Yeah, but I'm disproving it because if you're if you're if you're in a straight relationship and you can't have a kid, does that mean you love your wife less? Okay, can I? No, answer it. Can answer, I, it. answer the question. But I will if you keep quiet. Calm, calm down. I, in fact, I've already answered it, but you were not listening. What did I say earlier? I said there are certain exceptions where they can't have children because of medical reasons. Wait, wait. I've already answered your question, but you were not listening. So listen once again. An exception where there is a medical condition for a couple not to have children, it is an exception, not the rule. A rule is, is not based on exceptions. Now, if they had a reason, like a medical reason, because of which they cannot, so it's not their choice anymore. It is nature because of the natural uh, uh, whatever uh, inability to have children. It is not in that control. But when two people who are married and who have a normal, uh, what do you say, physiology, then they are able to have children, is it not? But they can choose. They can either choose to have, I know many people who are married, uh, yes, uh, opposite genders. One of my managers whom I used to work with, he chose not to have children, yeah? So I told him, okay, what's going to happen when you are going to get old, yes? Then he, he really didn't have an answer. Because children normally, especially in Islam, we believe that one of the main, main re, uh, reasons um, that to, to, to create harmony between the parent and the child is that the children respect the the parents and the parents in turn respect the, uh, the children. And the parents are actually, when they grow older, the Quran says that these do not neglect your parents. You should take care of them. In fact, one of the one of the passages in the Quran, Allah says, obey Allah, and then he talks about the, the rights of the parents, right next to it. Okay? So for us, this uh, relationship between children and parents is very important. So those same sex, same sex people, uh, marry, uh, sorry, uh, couples, they themselves had heterosexual parents. That's the reason they are in this world. Okay? Now, it is a choice, by the way. It is that choice. It is not because they choose not to have babies. It is by choice they choose, sorry, they actually choose to have a same sex, but there is no option at all to have children. Yes. So what they do, they crave children when they grow older. And then they adopt children of, of heterosexual people. They don't want them. All right. No, no, not necessarily. So this is, not, this is not, not, not necessarily. Not why, they, why, they, why they, why they? There are, by the way, I do agree with you. There are certain people who are irresponsible and who, after having children, they don't want to have the responsibility. And this, again, in Islam is forbidden. Once you have children, then you are, you're, in fact, even if you had a disabled child, you are, you are obliged to take care of the child. For us, even, even uh, I don't know what your views are with regards to um, uh, terminating pregnancy, you know, abortion. abortion. Yeah. What's your view with regards to that? You support you? You support abortion as well? Yeah. What about the right of the child in that case? Yeah, Charles, it's not a child. Say again? It's a, it's a myself first. Okay, what date? It's a, it's a collection of Why? Because I'm, I, that's my natural instinct. I'm going to put But the child up. never had a say in it's this matter. Child. Okay, so whose fault was it? The child's or the parents? It's nobody's fault if it's an accident. No, no, if it is an accident. If it's an accident. Wait, wait. When you say an accident, what does that mean? That means you took, you took you preventive measures and then you got pregnant. Is that what you're saying? Because to me, that is an accident. That's one, like that's one. Numbers. Yeah, okay, that I agree. That I, when you have taken measures yes. not to get pregnant yeah. and then you get pregnant, yeah. Yeah. then I agree that is an accident. But you know, today we have like 200,000 abortions a month in this country, a month or a year, forget, forget what it was. But what it is like, there's a huge proportion. I think it's a year, sorry. It's a year. In a year, you have 200,000 abortions. That's a huge number. And I don't think all those are damaged condoms. No, but, okay? but you, shouldn't saddle a, you shouldn't saddle a woman with a child. No, no, wait, wait, wait. When you say saddle, the minute 
two of them tangled together, yes, they already took the responsibility or, or becoming irresponsible. I feel like if you have sex without a condom, you should be willing to. If you're 15 years old, you don't necessarily know what you're doing, you're irresponsible. Then don't have sex then if you're not responsible. Yeah, Simple as that. Have, they've always had sex, they're always going to have sex. No, no, but if you if you have sex, then you know the consequences of that. A 15 year old. Wait, did you know what? Wait, wait. You, you know, 15 year olds are quite clever. Don't underestimate them. Not all of them, though. They, they <laughs> no, no, no. I agree. Not, not all 15 year olds just play Xbox and uh, Game Boys or whatever it is. They are quite responsible for many things. You know that in certain countries, 15 year olds, they run the family. Yes. Okay? But that's this, in this country, they're not. Our culture But they're not stupid in this country either. Our country doesn't raise 15 year olds to be that. that, that. Why not? They should. Well, Why we not? Should, we probably okay, should be however, more mature. However, yeah. however. Go on. In some you can come in. Like my friend grew up in a Catholic school, right? Yeah. She has been taught that the best way of having sex is having no sex. Prevention. So then yeah. when they have sex, they don't know what a condom is. She's 18 and she doesn't know what a condom is. Okay, so listen, in the age of information, ignorance is a choice. They're not allowed. They can't what, block. internet? All the links are blocked. Oh, do they not have internet at home? Come on. No, they don't. Well... You are telling me Catholics don't have internet at home? <laughs> I don't know which country you're living in. <laughs> but in this country, everyone has internet, as far as I know. The reason, the look, are no, no, lady, trust me. Anyone who doesn't have, I know my friends. So your friends don't have internet at home? They have internet. All of their websites are blocked. What? Any information? Who blocks it? Parents. Their parents. Like, red, like their parents parents are restrictions. You have parental restrictions. Okay. So, are you telling me that Catholics don't know that when they have sex, they can get pregnant? They do, but they. They know that, but they don't know how to prevent. Do they not? Do not? Do they not see outside that they sell condoms? You You're not living, you know, even in a third world country, they know what condoms are. So if anybody tells me in this day and age, yes, in a country like England, yes, children young, like 15 years old, don't know what condoms are, I think that is BS. Okay, with all due respect. So anyway, going back to the responsibility, why do you say the parents don't have a responsibility? When they get pregnant, then they are responsible as soon as, yes. You know what's interesting? When it comes to sex, a 15-year-old child or the 15-year-old child doesn't know. But if that same 15-year-old child was driving and runs over someone, no one's going to say, oh, it's okay, he's young, he well, doesn't they do. know. That's literally what young offender prisons are for. They, you, go, you go and you go rehab or you go, that, that's yeah. the whole point because you're not, you're not. So you're they are accountable. An you're not charged as an adult. They, you, they you recognize that point. You, No, but they are still accountable. They're held to account to, a, to an extent. Yeah, I but know, they are but they are accountable, account. that's the thing. You don't say he's just 15, just leave him. A 15-year-old child, let's go less. 13-year-old child, drink, he was killing a human being. Somebody does something. This is like the legal side, isn't it? Accountable. Nobody says, oh, they didn't know, it's okay. So similarly, if a 15-year-old now decides to have sex, why is there a double standard there? Because you shouldn't have to ruin your life just because you made one bad decision. What do you mean ruin the life? What, what about ruining the life of the baby that you're killing? This was a baby yeah. yet, though. It's, still, it's a bunch of cells. Ask the mother, she will always say my baby, unlike you. Okay, so when you're, trust me, when your mom was pregnant with you, I'm pretty sure while you were still a fetus, she called you my baby. It's an idea though, it's not a physical thing. It's I know, but, but, but that is the thing about you, you emotions, know, it know, is an idea. Trivializing exactly. Life. Oh, it's this not is... life though. To your mother, it was. It is life. Well, it's a potential that's for life. She it's, it's a human it. being. Exactly. It's a potential. When, she was responsible. So scientifically, yeah. when the egg and the sperm they fertilize and that process happens, scientifically, it's now the process has started. So let's let's stick with science because if we start trivializing life, oh that's an ant, oh that's uh, that's an amoeba, oh that's that, that's that, then you know what? Then it starts, you know, escalating, and then you start dehumanizing human beings. Oh, we can invade that country because those people are doing this or doing that. A life is a life and we should be consistent when it comes to morality. A child is a child. But it's not a child yet. But that's, but that's why I'm saying. Okay, when is it going is, to be a child? What the, when in they, this country is 24 weeks, isn't it? There's, there, there's a legal definition for when they are a child. Have you ever seen a, uh, have you ever seen an abortion in your life? I haven't seen it. Yeah, maybe you should. You'll change your mind. I won't change when you, when you have someone who is like a few weeks old, maybe even 12 weeks old, and they look like a fully formed baby with limbs, with a face, yes, with a heart beating, and they pluck them limb by limb, 
then you'll change your mind. Because what you're doing now, the reason you're trivializing it is because you haven't come across it. When you actually face it, then you'll you'll actually have tears in your eyes. Trust me, you will. It's a baby being plucked limb by limb. That is what abortion is, my friend. The majority of the people doing abortions, in your understanding and from what you've heard, why do majority of the people do abortions? Majority. Is it, is it they want to look after the child, they can't look after the child. Right, because of situations, economic, social. But we live in a country in which that's uh, exactly. not a good enough reason. Why? Because you're still trying to, to support you're universal still looking credit. You're the child, though. You can't, go, you can't go to school, you can't go to university. Your whole life is ruined because you because of one time. You should, you, because of one what? But in this one, because of one irresponsible behavior from the parents. You cannot blame the child for that, my friend. That's all I'm saying. A child... But you're blaming a child. No, no, wait. You're blaming a child. How? If they're 13, you're blaming a child. For what? For getting pregnant in the first place. Well, but they knew the repercussions of that. Yes, they, they knew exactly what was going to happen if they got pregnant. Not exactly. it's, not, it's not certain. Though, it is pretty certain. In this country, it is. I don't know which country you guys are from, but in this country, a 13-year-old knows what sex is, what the consequences of that are, and they even know how to prevent it. So don't tell me in this country they don't. There's a lot of support system they have put. The That's NHS, the, the NHS has put. Okay, so you cannot say they don't have a choice. They do have a choice. They have options. There's now, if you're going to blame, adoption. yeah, if you're going to blame everything on the child, then why the adults are not being blamed? That's Can a question. Can I ask for both of you got parents? Of course. Where do you think they, they came from? No, no, no. But <laughs> who live with you and like, like you're not grown up in foster homes? Yeah, yeah, we are not. So then, how can you say a foster home is a good enough life if you haven't experienced? No one is saying it's good enough, but it's better than death. Than death. I mean, come on, you can't compare on. the two. Exactly. One is one is pulling limb by limb in your mother's womb. You know that's not how yes? Have you seen an abortion? I have actually. That's not how an abortion. Have you seen an abortion? Yes. How does it happen? Because they take a pill. I don't know what, uh, pill, what, what year you want. Surgical it. abortion. No, no. Pill is only. Wait, wait. Pill can only work up to a certain uh, yeah, number of weeks. After that, you you only have one option, which is surgical. Yeah. Because of the size. That's why you haven't seen it. Because of the from, size. From okay. the, the isn't that and and by the way, no, no. Twenty-four weeks. Is is a lot of time yeah, yeah 24 weeks yeah, is a lot yeah, of time yeah, so if anyone goes up to that that what do you say the borderline when it becomes illegal to have an abortion then I think they probably are living in some I don't know out of reality they're not in touch with the reality but but if you look if you look at the the baby as it's developing in the mother's womb at a very young age yes when you would still call it fetus and I would call it baby yes the heart is beating at a very young age Yes, just, I think just a couple of weeks the heart starts beating. They're not conscious though. Define consciousness. <laughs> they're not experiencing, they, they, they have no, there is no world. They, they, they're existing purely within the womb. They, like if you, end, as you're saying, that's that's what, you're, saying you're saying an ended life is, is so, worse than so, so a bad life. But so, they have no life. It's surely no life is better than a bad life. Firstly, you said consciousness. Our understanding of consciousness is very minimal. We say 24 weeks, science is constantly understanding more and more and more for us to paint something and say no this is exactly when the child is alive therefore we can do that I would even say maybe 10 years down the line science may advance for us to rely and put the, our entire morality on the current scientific understanding do you think that's sensible? It's not, it's not just a moral point. Do you think that's sensible? It's not just a moral point, it's practical though. You have to be practical. Like, it's, been, it's been proven. James, it's if, you're, if you want to be practical, then we say that at fertilization, when, when copulation has happened and the person is pregnant, a life is a life. If you want to be pragmatic, you want to keep flat. If you then want to go to weeks, you have to resort to science. That's what you said. You said 24 weeks. I'm saying I'm bringing, I'm bringing it. Like, if it's going to cause a worse outcome, it's, 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 it, it, if I told you this, this person going to be miserable for their entire life, it's going to ruin the parent's life, it's going to ruin the child's life. Is that a, is that a beneficial outcome? Yeah, but uh, like you said, you there, there, people, there is social network emotions, here. That's a problem. It's not, they're not people. It's not, it doesn't exist. It's not, There's a network in this country. It has no choice. When you're an adult, you have a choice. It's, 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 not, it's, not, a, it's not a thing. It's just a, it's just a bunch of stuff. You, you actually made a good point. You said, what if the person's going to be miserable? for the whole life. We know cognitive, cognitively, no one stays miserable for their whole life. Yeah. yeah. So initially when a child is born, they may feel miserable. However, with that new life, when a connection develops, 
then the, obviously the relationship, the feelings will change. And what we're trying to tell you from a Muslim paradigm, from an Islamic paradigm, and we say that because God has created us, He has the picture, we have the pixel. He has the bigger picture. As human beings, we have a smaller understanding, and I'm sure you guys subscribe to the liberal mindset. I would, I would describe myself as liberal. Moral, moral wise, mostly. Yeah? Mor morally liberal. I don't include religion in my morality. Okay, yeah. So liberalism. Doesn't... Agnostic? Are you? Pardon? Are you agnostic? I'm agnostic? I think there's spirituality. I don't think you need okay. to quantify it into a god. What about you? I'm atheist. So what's what's the reason? Like because atheist is somebody that's certain that there's no god. <laughs> I have grown up in a religious household and I hated it. I hated what it did to people. I think there are too many people who use religion as an excuse to do bad and ruin religion for everyone else for it to possibly be good. Do you mind if I ask which religion your parents are? Hindu. Hindu? So what what is it in Hinduism that ruined people's life? Caste. Caste system? Okay, fair enough. You know, that's the problem of evil is actually quite common, but I'm sure you'll agree that their being evil or their being bad people doesn't disprove God logically. It, it doesn't disprove God, but it's, it's not a God I want to believe in. What if atheists do something similar to what the religious people do? Then what do you do? But then it, atheist isn't a religion. Exactly. So it, but it's an ideology. Themselves doing it. Yeah, but if you're going to subscribe to an ideology, an and that ideology does the same thing. It's an absence of ideology. It does. There is is no, really. No. It is. Because it has a definition. There's nothing there. It's an no, no, no. It's literally uh, an absence. No, you're talking about the creator being nothingness, but in terms of ideology, it's more, it's more like liberalism, secularism, where there's a no harm principle where they say as long as you don't harm someone you can live freely as you wish but you see in every society there is limits like for example in this country you cannot become an anti-semite and get away with it so okay so you don't have that liberty wherever you go even though you also, you assume that uh, atheism gives you or liberalism gives you that that freedom but in reality every single ideology whichever it is how has does, certain limits how does atheism restrict your life in any way how does it affect if, if you're an atheist yeah. for a day how is that going to change? Like, it's obviously going to lose stuff because you're not going to probably not going to pray. But how does it actually affect? Like, how? When are you going to think I'm an atheist? I'm going to act differently in this situation. In terms of morality, yeah. I'm going to morality, well. objective atheist, morality. Yeah. An atheist can't prove if X thing is right or wrong. Based you right can't prove me. anything. But do you see? You're, you're saying it's do right or wrong because yeah. I believe in a god. I have that backing me. I have God backing me. I have myself backing me. What's the difference? That's all. Yeah. That's more. So. It comes down to subject subjectivism, isn't yeah. it? So subjectivism, I'm sure you'll agree, can't be proved. So you need to be proved. At least you know. You I know myself. That's fine. Look, what I'm saying is, for you to prove something that this is right or wrong, yeah. you have to, by definition, prove it objectively. Yeah. For you to say, so we are, look, we are looking for objective there morals. Is no right and wrong. No, no, we are, we are looking. Look, no, but that's, no, no, that no limiting yourself. Morals. If I come, okay, one, say, one, say, one second. Look, I've, I've hurt yeah. Russian, and you go, nah. I'm like, bro, bro, look, I've, I've hurt him, and he's like, yeah, that's. Can you call the police? Uh, is that bad though? You, you, you're limiting yourself. But society gets okay. together. Society gets together and agrees what's right and wrong. That's the whole point. No, but but hold on, no. you know there are certain things which every society will agree. If I asked you, do you know any society which agrees with rape? Yes. Yes. Which? Middle Eastern. What? Rape? Agrees with rape. Which? Yeah. Where did you... Which Iran. Mid, wait, wait. Iran which, Iran. Mid, which Middle Eastern country have you been to? Iran. Have you been to Iran? From there. You're from Iran. Iran. Have you no, been to Iran? Do you know the punishment for rape is in Iran? Do. You don't have it in India, trust me. It's, <laughs> I, I, think so, it's, I think there's a difference between the culture of the religion nah, and the culture of the people. No, no, there's, it's not culture. I'm talking about religion. That's the reason okay. I asked you specifically. Is a culture. Which, is a culture. which ideology or religion has agreed with rape? Oh, I misheard you. Okay. So anyone who's, who says that rape is okay, I don't think there's any such, even in the past and the present. And I very much doubt in the future rape will become okay. Well, we were talking to a guy earlier who was, who was for that. Well, he, he's probably not right in the head. <laughs> well, he was a Christian. Uh, it doesn't matter. Just, well, he agrees with rape. <laughs> yeah, he said, Seriously. You said it was good. What was the context? Women are property. Oh. Well, you know, in this country. nice to hear. You know, in this country, the women were property 150 yeah, years ago. That's what we were, that's what, that's what we were arguing. He was, he, he was, he was saying that, um, for instance, Muslims are coming over with what in this country be seen as backwards views. Back 
backwards. Yeah. And um, he was saying that, oh, Christians don't believe that. But I was saying, like, it's not Muslims rape, it's men are raped. Exactly. Yeah. And women. And, when, but yeah, and, no, but and he, the, he was talking about the rape and the, and the punishment for rape is the most severe in Islam, trust me. Okay, it's one of the most severe punishments in Islam and also in Judaism and also in the Old Testament times when the Christians used to believe in, in that as well. But what I'm saying is, here is that there are objective truths, you cannot deny them. So when you say there's no truth and falsehood, I doubt very much that is the case. There are things which are objectively true and which are objectively science. false. Not necessarily. Even science is not written on stones. No, no gravity. No, of course, there are, ob there are things in science which are observable and these things are true. But I'm not saying everything in oh, science... Oh, no, no, that's theoretical. Yeah, exactly. Theoretical. Exactly. So science is not written on stone. Okay, there are things, as soon as they find new data, they can change the postulation quite easily. Okay, so sorry, I yeah, lost so, so in terms yeah. of theology, a person that's an atheist will tend to be a liberal. They tend to be a capitalist. They tend to be a nihilist. For example, if I was to ask you now, can you prove to me that a neurosurgeon who spends his days, you know, healing people and performing really intrusive surgery is superior to somebody who just sits at home making circles all day? I personally don't think he is. That he is superior. I think he's, I don't. I think so you think somebody who makes circles all day is the same as a neurosurgeon? They deserve the same rights. They deserve an equal life. You don't like, think just one is better? No, I think one might be cleverer and smarter, but I don't think. Are you talking better. in terms of value of a, as a human? That's what you're saying, right? Sorry. You're, you're talking about in terms of value as a human. Is that what you're referring to? Because to the society, I think to, to the society, a neurosurgeon exactly, adds much exactly. More, much more so when you when you have a child who, mean the who has a disease, who has, means less. when you have a child who has who requires a neurosurgeon, you will not look for a guy drawing circles. You'll go look for a guy who is going to help you, who's qualified. No, no, I'm not saying. He, he asked you about the value. Are the same? They're not the same, obviously. Yeah. He said which one's better? Yeah, in terms of moral superiority. Yeah. If a person is performing brain intuition surgery and somebody just making circles all day I as a, as yeah. a believer in God I can say that a person who's performing surgery that person is morally better than somebody that's not doing that you see so uh, you, you were saying how does that limit me as an atheist I would say that's how it limits you if something happens in front of you a crime you, you guys are talking about rape if something, something like that is happening in front of you, you can't, as an atheist, go, that's wrong. You can. I do. How? That's your opinion. That's your, it's, it's purely your opinion. It's your opinion. And that's the only thing you can really know. You, you, think, you think there's other up there, that, but that's your, you don't know. You don't know. The only thing you know is what, is, you think, I, I think therefore I am, they can't. I think the only thing you know is what you're thinking in this current moment. That's the only thing you I think observe. therefore I am. Yes. Is that what you're predicating? No, but I'm saying that's, a, that's the only thing that you can actually know, and that is that is what atheism is. The only, atheism, the only thing you know is what you're thinking. The only thing, the only, the only thing in this observed thing. I have water. I have water. Is what you're thinking, and so that, that means that you can't. You're not restricted. You know your opinion, and that's you know that's right. Right and wrong is purely determined by what you think. Do you agree with that as well? That the foundation is I think, therefore I am. It just means you're conscious. That's all it means. But I mean, that's you disagree it with that, yeah? Like it's an absence, What's your reason for disagreement? That's what I'm saying. I think it's there are loads yeah. of that's what Descartes was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're conscious, but, but yeah. don't but really it's, exist. It's not the, your consciousness is being influenced like by this. I feel like existing in, in this world is can be influenced by your friends, by the society. And then that's, what are you studying at university? What are you studying at university? Sorry, philosophy, politics, and economics. All right, say no more. Say no more. So then you're going to understand my response to him then. So you said, I think, therefore I am. Yes. Yeah, that's been refuted by many contemporaries of Descartes himself. For example, I think, therefore I am is predicated on I. I, Nietzsche said, I mean, how can you even assume that there is an I to begin with? Because you know. No. Because you're saying, merely thinking, that's the foundation of everything. Nietzsche said, if you're saying that's the foundation and the statement is, I think, therefore I am, I, again, is an identity, is a being, so that's false. Wittgenstein then said, how is that person even conceptualizing that statement? Because that statement is predicated on language. So that's why I'm saying that if you constantly keep going down, 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 what you can do is, and this is what philosophers go down to, is called a necessary being. Because otherwise you're going to be stuck in a infinite regress. This is dependent on this, this is dependent on this. So 
I will actually give you a lifeline, and the lifeline is existence. This is what Avicenna said, that the most foundational thing that we have to exist, that we have to agree, even when we're interfacing and talking here, is that we, we have to agree and accept that we exist. They're the basic principles. Yeah, so you accept that we exist, isn't it? Well, there's, there's, there's conspiracy theories about... Um... Uh, James, I'm asking your theory. Well, are you in touch with your reality? That's yeah, the question. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's the simulation theory, which... It's like, I know yeah. what you were thinking. Yeah. You've been, watch, you been watching too reality? much Black Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a bit of Truman Show. Okay, I like that. Matrix, are you? Yeah. <laughs> but no, but I, yeah, I think I accept, largely, I, largely I accept that yeah, you are... That you are you exist as well, yeah? yeah? Do I exist? I think you, yeah. Okay, good. But is an existence, again, is predicated to your consciousness? Yeah. Do you need to be conscious for you to even say, I exist? Yeah. It's the same thing. So I think consciousness truly plays an important role as well. Yeah, that's why they call it the hard problem of consciousness. Yeah. Do you believe that there is order, some order in the world that we live in? Yes? Yeah. Limited, but yes. Yes. Then, if we use logical reasoning, there is existence, there is order. Therefore, there is existence to explain that order. Do you have any issue with that line of reasoning? So there is existence, yeah. fundamentally, yeah. there is order. Yeah. So that order, ha order. Yeah. So that order has to be predicated on an existence. It's interactions between people existing that creates okay. the order. Yeah, because I'm linking it to the fact that there can't be an infinite, regre infinite regress of dependent things. There has to be a necessary being. Like, was it Aristotle who called it the prime mover? Yeah. Yeah, the prime mover, yeah? So, do you, what do you think about the prime mover? argument so that's like if you like you you're dependent on x x dependent on y y is dependent on z and it keeps going yeah there has to be an end to that chain and the end to the chain is gone. no the end to that chain is a necessary being according to the philosophy that you're studying yeah. as well to uh, leibniz descartes yeah, all of these yeah. guys but yeah for you guys it's gone, right? but for us it's what gone. we'll say is that and you're welcome to challenge this yeah. and the quran gives a four line criteria and in fact, I would say this is special and unique to Islam and you're more than welcome to disprove it here and now. Yeah, a Christianity doesn't have it, Hinduism doesn't have it, Sikhism doesn't have it. We have a four line pH test of God. It's towards the end. Yeah, he has to, he is one. Like that necessary being is one. But you just he. Yeah, he is like uh, the. Yeah, that's your quantum. That's your no, quantum there's no he, there's no she. It's uh, it's used it's, as a. It's called it's pro God, God is neutral, uh, gender neutral. Gender neutral. But in Arabic, the default position is a he. Okay. That's, yeah, so it's like no it in Arabic. It's like when a royal pass says we. There's no three queens walking around. It's like the royal we. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What is oneness to you? One means a single entity. One divisible. And it's it's going to explain itself. He is one. The independent does not beget, nor is he begotten. Yeah, he doesn't give birth, nor was he given birth to, and there is none like him. That's our criteria for God. Okay. Not a human being, not a thing, not an object, not a, an idol, because even logically an idol, if a fly comes and sits on it, the, the idol relies on you to remove the fly. The idol relies on you to put a garland around it. The idol relies on you to clean it. If somebody comes and elbow is, elbows it, it's broken, it's finished. Human being, Jesus, he came, he had to obviously eat. What goes in, must come out, yeah? So it's not befitting of God to be sitting on the toilet, to be weak, uh, to be put on the cross, to be ridiculed, to be sworn at, and to be put in a weak position. Does that make sense to you so far? To our children. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So you're more than welcome to critique any of this because the Islamic position of God, that's why Islam is the fastest growing religion. Because you can explain it to a five year old, you can explain it to a ten year old, a twenty year old, a fifty year old. Yeah, it's it's innate. Uh, in fact, Justin Barrett of University of Oxford, he said our belief in God is actually innate. Olivera Petrovic said the same thing as well. You can check these peer-reviewed journals. Yeah, that we're born with the inclination towards God. Yeah, to believing in God. Yeah, God. Well, I would say that you're you're born in an ape. Will it? you you're, we we want to we want to understand. We want to understand. That you're saying that's God. You're saying your understanding is God. 
I don't think you're innate to God. You're innate to understand. We're, we're naturally inquisitive. We want to understand. That's why we have society. That's why we have buses. That's, that cameras. Any any of this stuff. That's only because we're inquisitive. That's because we want to understand. We want to better. But that's got. No, that's not. That doesn't equal God. We want. We we have. We want to understand. That's why we have science. If we didn't have, we weren't naturally inquisitive. James, swat me for that because that was actually a good point. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, the science one. Let's hold on. Put that on ice for a second because we don't want to conflate the two things. So the first thing you said is it's not God. It's it's just it's the what we want to understand the world. We're inquisitive the world. and how it works. So right. we can actually put God on that. Right. We, want, we like to understand why. Like it's the it's the. It's I got the, you. I got it's you. The, it's the stopwatch. I got you. I got you. The world is so perfect that it must have been created. I got you. I got you. So the peer review journal actually says no, it is actually God. That's that's what the, and that's why you're welcome to check that out. Let's just say we put that to the side for now as well. No problem. Santa Claus, the goblin, this, that, whatever fallacies are put forward to discredit people of faith. A child that's five, six may believe in Santa Claus, yeah. ten year old. Now, as the person grows older, no, you don't hear of a thirty year old saying, I have had a revelation. I am going to believe in Santa Claus now. Or a person that's 35 or 40 that says, I'm going to believe in the fairy godmother now. Yeah, it doesn't work. But when it comes to God, there are people that are 25, 30 year old. In fact, there are people that are born in secular, atheistic households. But after looking, like whether it's Dawkins, whether it's uh, Leo Tolstoy, all these guys, when you look at design, anybody that looks at design has to acknowledge that there has to be a designer. Yeah. So when you look at Santa Claus, when you look at other fairy tale things, a person won't accept them when they get older. But Islam is one of those things that you will. Go ahead. I think evolution is the designer. Right. That, that's a category uh, mistake there. Evolution and Big Bang are mechanisms. Yeah. And God is a creator of mechanisms. So you think God... Let me just elaborate that. Let me just elaborate that. It's a, it's a small analogy. It's like a Ford car. Uh, I, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, how does it work? And somebody explains to me how it works. They give me the mechanisms. That doesn't mean that Henry Ford now ceases to exist. Henry Ford will always be there, even though I know how the pistons work, how I know how the hydraulics work. Similarly with the world, us knowing how things work doesn't exclude the designer. Good? But why, why do you need a designer? Surely the, the evolution is good enough. The, the pocket watch argument, isn't it? It's not perfect. necessarily, not necessarily. Because the, 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 the pocket watch uh, example is a bit flawed. It's a William Paley, uh, Paley uh, example. It, it's flawed. How is it any different to what you're saying? Though? Yeah, because a watch, it's one particular thing. And that one thing, you know the creator of that watch. You've seen the process taking place. But what you're saying is, but the universe, we haven't seen it being made. We don't know. But when you make that argument, that's a big slippery slope because then you have to discredit Big Bang. You have to discredit evolution. You have to discredit geology because evolution is predicated upon testimony. It's predica predicated on astrological findings. And you're not going to see the instigation and the beginning of that process. So that will, will, <laughs> that will lead to anarchy. Using that argument, if you were to ask you, point of view, where did the universe come from? What would be your answer? The Big Bang. No, but the Big Bang is yeah, like it's a the mechanism. Same the same question to you: where, where the God, like the stuff, we, we, we as humans, the way, in reality, we, we don't, we, but like this, this hasn't come from nothing. Like you can't just, like it, it's, it's very easy to just go. It came, it, it, God came from nowhere. Like he's, he, no, no, we are not using God as an example. That's the reason I asked you from your, no, from your from, perspective. What's your start? You're saying what's our start? What's your start? Yeah, we'll, we'll give you our answer, but I want to know first from your perspective where you don't have, where you don't base uh, this creation on God as, as. He Yes, we do. But because you come from a different perspective, yeah. that's why I asked you from your point of view, where do you think the universe came from? It's an explosion from... Uh, is it, okay, from, so from one, from do you think that Big Bang just happened uh, out of the blue? Yeah. Well, there's, there's, it didn't. That's there's, what the scientists there's, say. There's theories that came... It's, a, it's the result of a previous universe, a universe... No, there's a cyclic universe. Again, it is the least accepted... Um, there's no 
model evidence of the universe. In fact, it's, it's, it's not even accepted by majority of the credible scientists in that field. The one that is most accepted is the Big Bang uh, yeah, but theory. There are, there the theory three, behind um, it. I'm saying Big Bang. The Big Bang. Say again? There are three starts of the Big Bang. One is that it came through like a black hole. One is that it's always been... Black holes are part of the universe, so it can't come through a black hole. Well, that's black holes are part of the universe. Well, I scientists know it's, better it's than like I a, it's, like, it's like a mother giving birth to herself. Yeah, no, I, I've, I've studied it, and well, things don't start from a black hole. Yeah. A black that, hole. That's what we've been yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's when a, it's when a start... <laughs> it's when a star explodes, and then then a black hole is made after exactly. supernova it's after, or it's, it's neutron part of the universe. stars. There's an argument that it's popped out from... What are the other two? You said there are three. It, it, oh, you said there were three. No, I didn't say that. Oh, you said there were three. Okay. Um, there's, there's one where it, it's, it's... Because you know the universe is constantly expanding. Yes, it is. It's expanding from one... But it's everywhere. It's expanding. Like, the point is everywhere. No, we don't, we don't say it's expanding in a point. The thing is, everything that is space and time, for the scientists, that is the universe. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, it's everywhere. So when you say expanding, you know, that's how they compute the age of the universe. So they, they look at the... There's an equation for the expansion, and they reverse that equation to find out the age of the universe. And they say something in the region of 13.8 billion years. So this is how. So anything that began to exist, yes, then that has a cause. So you cannot say the universe doesn't have a cause because the universe began to exist. See what I mean? Sorry, what's your name? Prishi. Prishi. Prishti. Prishti. Prishti really with a P. Know. B or P? P. B, yeah? Prishti. I'll talk to you later because we really, really have you, Can we just make five, one five thing minutes, before you go? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go. Okay. Where are you off to? Where? She, she's oh, really thirsty. It's right there, it's right there. Uh, she's gone to get water and then he's just followed her. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Are they coming back? Uh, I think so. He oh. wanted to stay for five more minutes. Uh, I think she was really thirsty. She asked for water about 20 minutes ago. Oh, I see. That's fine, no problem. Yeah, we can uh, continue later. So you can, you, you can close it. That's fine. Yeah. Was it Prishti or Brishti? I didn't hear actually. Yeah. So don't let they anyone should, block. They should provide a word of public access here around yeah, here because yeah, everybody yeah. comes here. It's, it's, it's true, it's true. It's hot, you know. But it's, this is Britain. This hot weather happens very rarely here. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, if you leave a glass here, the rain will, uh, you know, replenish that. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, brother? Welcome, salam, you guys. Don't let anyone